Hi there YouTubers, Jim from Ohio here and I'd like to continue with the next episode in my DIY solar series. Uh, in this episode I'd like to talk about the ground mounted solar racking system that I put together. Uh, now the reason I chose to go with a ground mounted system uh, there are actually several reasons. Uh, first reason is uh, my roof line faces east and west so I don't really have a good solar facing surface to mount the panels on. Uh, the second reason was because we just had a new roof put on the house last year and the last thing I want to do is start poking holes in it and risk damaging uh, the roof or any other parts of my house. Um, I mentioned in another of my videos that we plan on moving from our current location in three to four years and therefore I wanted to put together a system that was somewhat modular that would be easy to relocate when we move uh, we'll be able to take this system with us and then the final reason was because living here in Ohio we do get a large amount of snowfall in the winter time and with the panels mounted on the roof when there's snowfall or ice there's just no way you can get up there to clear the panels off so by having it mounted on the ground makes it a little bit easier to remove that snow so um, the first step that I did in uh, putting together the rack was to go online and do a little bit of research and this is a website that I found it's uh, solarelectricityhandbook.com and on this web page they have a page for solar angle calculators so the first thing that I wanted to do was determine the optimal solar angle to mount my panels at and they've got several online calculators here that I thought were beneficial and uh, the first one allows you to uh, go in you select your country and then you select the state that you're in and then uh, they don't have a whole lot of uh, cities listed for Ohio but they do have Columbus which I'm in the outskirts of Columbus but what this does is it shows me the optimal angle for each month of the year so if you're gonna build a movable uh, rack something that you can change with the month or change with the season this would be quite helpful for you now I'm gonna have one of my racks be changeable and I'll probably change it with the seasons uh, I don't think there's really a need to change it monthly that would get kinda tedious uh, but my larger rack is gonna be a stationary mounted system so what I could do is go in and add up all of the angles here and then divide the total number that I arrive at by 12 and that would give me the optimal angle but looking at the numbers here I see that the month of December is kinda of far uh, a far distance between all of the other uh, numbers here so what I opted to do was just to throw December out add all the other numbers together and just divide by 11 when I did that I came up with an angle of 52 degrees and so uh, that's what I decided to go with but looking at the site I did see they had a couple other online calculators so I clicked there to see what else they had and I found that they also had uh, this calculator for uh, solar irradiance um, so when I went in and looked at that um, it worked basically the same way you go in and you can select uh, your your country you select your state and then the nearest city same as before but what this one does a little bit different is it allows you to select the direction that your panels will be facing now I do plan on facing mine directly south but they did have other options that were available here just in case you were mounting uh, in a different direction or if you were mounted on your roof line so I found that quite helpful so by doing this it really did the math for me it, it added up all these angles and then it told me uh, if I was mounting on a vertical surface um, uh, I could click here and it would uh, kinda give me the, or the amount of uh, hours of sunlight each day I could expect to get uh, or if I uh, had a year-round mounting system it told me that the angle I want to go with is 50 degrees and it tells me basically the number of hours I can expect on a daily basis each month so I thought that was a very helpful calculator so this is telling me instead of 52 degrees 
uh, facing due south, I really want to go with a 50 degree angle. So with that knowledge in mind, I went ahead and started designing the rack that I wanted to go with. Uh, let's take a walk outside and I'll show you what I've accomplished so far. All right, so here we are outside now. And the first thing that I did with the racking system was uh, to plan out my uh, area and put down a good gravel base. The last thing that I want to do is be fighting weeds and grass and having to constantly mow or weed eat around my rack. Uh, so I did uh, plan on exactly where the rack was going to go and put down a good uh, couple inch thick gravel base. Um, then the next thing that I did based on the angle that I had decided on, which was 50 degrees, was I started building the, uh, or putting the post into the ground. And I did go with a wooden post instead of a metal post. I know that some people like to go with um, metal just to make sure that things don't deteriorate over years, but I'm only going to be here for several years. And this is, uh, the post that I went with is a, a four by six inch post, uh, 10 foot long and it is pressure treated so that's going to still last probably 20 or 30 years but the first thing that I did was measure out the distance that I wanted the post to be uh, separated and I put those in the ground about uh, between 36 and 40 inches and I put two 80 pound bags of concrete into each of those posts um, and then uh, I ran a stringer across the top. The stringer that I went with was a 2 by 8 and that again is pressure treated and I wanted to make sure that that was good and solid up there so um, I did use um, a not, not really a carriage bolt, a uh, screw type carriage bolt but I did use a, uh, a couple of good uh, strong washers and I drilled all the way through and everything's held on there with nuts uh, and uh, like I said good size washers and uh, so that's my top base uh, I ran a 12 foot beam and then I did connect a second 12 foot beam all the way down at the other side so it's one continuous run all the way down and that was why I chose to go with the four by six post. It'd be stronger and it allowed me to butt uh, two of the uh, two by eight boards in the middle and have uh, plenty of room for the bolts to bite into. If I had gone with just a four by four, there wouldn't have been enough material for me to do that. Um, then I determined where my second, uh, my lower uh, post should be and that was based on the 50 degree angle that I had decided on and I did exactly the same thing down at the bottom. The only difference that I did at the bottom was uh, I did go with a 4x4 four four post as, a as opposed to a 4x6 just because the bottom isn't going to have as much weight on it or take as much wind as the top is going to. Uh, the difference there was in the middle I did go ahead and put a four by six in the middle instead of a four by four and that allowed me to butt the two uh, uh, two by eight uh, 12 foot uh, length boards to that uh, and then the next challenge that I had was how to mount uh, I went with the metal super strut and this is uh, Home Depot's brand uh, I know there's Unistrut and super strut but this is pretty heavy-duty stuff so the challenge that I had was how to get that mounted onto a wooden surface. And what I ended up finding, I looked all over for mounting hardware, and Super Strut does sell uh, something that looks like this, a U-bolt. Uh, but the brand, or the, the one that Super Strut sells is actually very expensive. They come in pairs, and I want to say they were like 60 or 70 bucks a pair. Uh, what I did instead was I looked around some auto parts stores and I ended up going to an advanced auto part and uh, these are actually U-bolts uh, that are used for trailer suspensions and so they are hardened they come with the hardware nuts and uh, uh, lock washers and these run uh, $20 for a set of four so uh, what I did have to do, since they are uh, a U rather than on an angle, I did have to determine 
uh, where to cut those off. And so here's what I came up with. So I cut those off at an angle you can see here. And so without having to penetrate the wood at all, uh, they serve as a clamp. They hold everything down nice and tight. Uh, I did add a larger washer down inside of the channel. And then I used the lock washer and nut to hold everything down in place. Um, the little bit of a challenge that I had there was how to tighten the nut because there was no way I could get a socket down in there to tighten it. So everything had to be done with a pair of pliers and just a little bit of movement at a time. Uh, but I don't think it'll be that big of a deal even if everything isn't uh, torqued down super tight uh, because uh, as long as I've got uh, the nut screwed down enough uh, because it acts as a clamp, there's no way that that's going to ever move even in the strongest wind. So. Uh, once I had that mounted, uh, the next thing to do was uh, double check my angles. And um, so I went and picked up uh, this angle gauge and was able to set it right on here. And uh, it put me right at, uh, I'm at about 50 degrees, 49 degrees, somewhere uh, around there. So everything was good with that. And then uh, the next thing that I had to do was simply to mount the uh, panels. And to mount the panels, um, what I ended up doing was uh, the manufacturer of Unistrut and Superstrut makes a, here, let me show you one of them. Uh, they make a device that looks like this. It's a spring on the bottom, and then it has a screw hole, and uh, this is a, uh, I think it's a quarter 20 thread but uh, you're able to simply uh, insert this down into the channel and it ends up looking like this right here. Uh, once you've got that, uh, it's just a matter of putting a bolt and a washer through the back side of the frame of the solar panel uh, directly to the rack. Uh, so uh, with that, I was able to get uh, nine of my 12 255 watt panels mounted. Um, I've got uh, three more to mount right here in this place. I wanted to wait and do the video just so I could show a little bit of the frame before proceeding. Uh, once I've got that done, it's just a matter of uh, getting the panels, uh, running the uh, wire into the house and getting the panels connected to all of the components inside. So things are moving along uh, very slowly, but we're, uh, we're getting there. Um, the other rack that I have over here is built exactly the same way, only I did put the posts a little bit further apart. Uh, that is going to be a tiltable rack. I'm going to have three 315 watt panels over there, um, and that will be used to heat water. That's another project coming down the road. Um, I'll talk more about that rack. Uh, since it is tiltable, uh, I'll do a separate video on that. But uh, that's what I've got going on so far. Um, hope you've enjoyed the series up to this point. If anyone has any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.